Alright, now we're gonna go and cover the boolean functions that return either true or false and we usually use them as a boolean expression to control the flow of our code and to build a logic in our conditional statements. So let's check few boolean functions. Alright, now let's start with the basic stuff. We consider the boolean values as an expression. So we have two values, we have the true and as well the false. So now if you execute it, you will get true and false in the output. And as we learned before, be careful with the capital T and the capital F. So those are the two values They represent like an answer, yes or no. And of course you can go and check the boolean data tab using the type function. So if you have here like true and you go and execute it, you will see the class boolean. All right, so those are about the values. Now we have as well functions that returns true or false. Like for example, the built-in pool function, it's gonna go and convert any value to true or false so for example let's have value one two three and let's print it you can see we are getting true so now as you can see in the output we are getting true because this function is gonna check whether you have an empty value or you have a real value so now let's take another example for example instead of number let's have a string so we have a high and if you go and execute it you will get as well true because we have a value it is not empty so now let's go and try something that's gonna return false so boolean and now we're gonna leave it empty like this so let's go and execute it so as you can see we are getting false because it is empty we don't have a value now we can go and check something else like pool and we can go with the zero now in the output we are getting false now of course the zero is a value it's not like an empty but in the boolean function it's gonna be considered as nothing so there is no quantity so for this function this is gonna be considered as an empty and the same thing if you go and print and then you have only double quotes so we have a plan nothing inside it if you go and execute it this is gonna be false so for this function this is empty now if you remember we have a special value called none in Python this means there is no value at all it is unknown and doesn't belong to any data type so it's not a number string boolean it is the real nothing and it is not equal of course to the empty string because empty string is already a string but for the pool function it's gonna be considered as an empty now of course if you go and pass this value to the pool and print it you will see in the output we will get as well false because this considered to be nothing so this is a really nice function in order to quickly check your values whether they have a real value inside it or it is an empty and this function gonna return true or false and now my friend if you want to master all the aspects of python including functions with a learn by doing approach and many hands-on exercises i really recommend here data camps python data fundamentals track okay so now let's move on we have a lot of functions that return true or false and we have two important built-in functions called all and any let's understand what this means now let's say that we have multiple values like for example we have zero and as we understood zero in boolean is false because the size is empty it is zero now we have another box another value and inside it we have false this is of course in boolean is false as well and a third value and here we have string character a now since it is not empty we have a real value the boolean value of this is gonna be true because it's not empty now as you can see we have evaluated those values separately but now what we can do in python we can evaluate them all together and here in python we have two options either you use the function all or any so now if you go and use the built-in function any it's gonna be happy if one of those boxes is checked as true so if there is like somewhere yes then it is totally fine and in the output you will get true but now if you go and apply the function all this one is really greedy it's gonna say i want everything to be checked and marked as true so if there is like somewhere false you will get false that's why in this example you will get false let's have another example where we have three values like one true and a so now python gonna go and evaluate them one by one so we're gonna have here everywhere true so now if you go and use the function any it's gonna be more than enough all what it asks for one true that's why you will get true in the output and now comes the greedy one all this time it's gonna be happy because everything is green and all the values is true that's why you will get in the output true so as you can see those two functions are really easy so now let's go back in order to practice all right now let's have a nice example where we have three variables like email phone and username let's go and assign for them few values for example this is gonna be empty and for the phone number we have some kind of this 
number and the username gonna be empty now as you might already know if you are registering to any websites they're gonna require from you few informations and each website has their own rule like for example let's say that we have a rule in our website to say we allow registration if one of those informations are filled so we don't need all three it's enough to have one to validate the registration so that means we have to check all those three variables whether we have informations or not and if there is like one of them is filled that is more than enough so now since we want to check multiple informations we could use any or all and now by looking to the task it is not restrictive it's enough to have one true in order to allow the registration that's why we're gonna go with the any and here we're gonna build the list so our list is email phone and username now in order to check the result we can go and print it so let's go and execute you can see this is allowed because the phone here is true so the email is false username is false and the phone is true and that's more than enough for the any that's why we are getting true now if you go and remove the phone number and execute you will get false because we are not fulfilling the minimal requirements it should at least has one true now let's say that you are building some annoying website where we need all the informations in the registration form so you have to give everything the email the phone the username and if one of them is missing it will not allow the registration so that means it is a must to have a true in all those three parameters and of course for that we cannot use the any we have to go and use all so the same thing i'm gonna go and copy the whole thing here and just replace the any with all so let's go and execute it of course it's gonna be false because our user didn't provide anything now let's go and give some informations so now we have a number and we have a user id but let's say we didn't give the email so let's go and execute it for the first website we will get through because we have more than enough we have like two informations but for the annoying websites it will not work you have to give all the informations all those stuff should be true so that means in order to get this true you have to go and add here a website or like any value we are not validating the emails here so let's go and execute it only then you will get true so this is a very simple use case why we need the any and all and those functions we could use it as an expression of course for our conditions later okay so now let's keep going we have another function that returns false or true and that is the is instance as you remember we can use it in order to check whether a value belong to specific data type like for example we can go and check whether the one two three is an integer so let's go and print it so as you can see in the output we are getting true because 1 2 3 is an integer and let's go and try something else like for example i'm gonna say here true and i'm gonna check whether this value is a string so let's go and execute it you will get false because true is actually a boolean not a string so as you can see this function checks the data type and return true or false and now for the next one of course not only functions we could use methods from the class string do you remember the one that we used in order to search in a string for example that ends with and here we can go and search for example for the o now we can go and print it so as you can see in the output we are getting true that means this method return true or false the same thing for the start with so starts with and if you go and execute it you will get false because the string does not start with the o it starts with an h all right so that's it so far about the functions that could return the boolean value and you can use them as a boolean expression and after that we're gonna deep dive into the operators there are many different important operators that you could use as a boolean expressions and we're gonna start with the first group the comparison operators they are very simple but yet very powerful and used a lot 